Good evening, children. It's Granny Macduff, ready with a story. So make yourselves comfy, and I'll begin. Once upon a time, there lived three children. Milo, Marcus and Maisie. They were great friends. And in fact, they spent so much time together that the townspeople called them the Three Little M's. It was growing cooler. It was the time of year that for one night, the townspeople would dress up in costume and celebrate to mark the transition from summer to winter. This town was the friendliest town in all the land. And while some residents would grumble and mumble, everyone got along quite fine. However, there was one resident who no one ever dared to visit. It was said that a witch lived deep in the forest on top of a small hill. The children were warned to only go in the forest when the sun is high in the sky and never past the ninth line of trees, for that was where the witch's territory begins. It was said that the witch had been there for centuries and anyone who crossed her path would never be heard from again. No one had seen her in years. She had put a curse on the town so that it was covered in perpetual fog, so dense you could not see five feet in front of you. It was said that the fog was meant to hide the witch's house so that it could never be found. But some did find their way, and they had not been heard from since. It was the stuff of legend. Some did not believe in this witch at all, but whether they believed it or not, no one dared go looking for the witch. On the night that the children ran about in costumes, just as we do now on Halloween, at that time it was called Samhain. Milo, Marcus and Maisie were dressed up as a pumpkin, a lamb and a witch. The other children teased Maisie that she looked like the real witch in the woods and would not let her play with them. One of them hit her basket. It fell to the ground, all of her treats spilling everywhere. She was so upset, she ran away, deep into the woods. She ran and ran, and before she knew it, Maisie realized she had lost her way. Come with me, said a voice, and Maisie followed. Soon she was at the gate of the witch's house, Come inside, said the voice, and Maisie, not sure why, walked straight into the witch's house. Come and sit, the voice commanded, and a chair moved all by itself right up to Maisie. She sat, and the chair scraped across the floor to the table. It was a long table at which there were many townspeople seated. No one moved, for they were all under the witch's spell. Now you are mine, cried the witch. In town, Milo and Marcus searched high and low for Maisie, but she was nowhere to be found. They told their parents and a search party was organised. Torches were lit and everyone set out. But the fog grew thicker, and they soon lost their way and gave up. Milo and Marcus could not sleep. They had made a pact that not one of the three would ever be lost, and they vowed to keep it. The boys each took a lantern from their house and went into the forest. They were certainly scared and had no way of telling what they would do should they find the witch. But one thing was certain, they must save Maisie. Slowly but surely, they took small steps and forged ahead. 
wolves howled, and owls hooted, and then they heard it. The witches cackle. <laughs> this way, cried Marcus, and they walked, and she cackled again. This time it was louder. The boys knew they were getting closer. Suddenly, the flames in their lanterns extinguished, as if a ghost had blown them out. We must be close, said Milo. And then they saw the gate to the witch's lair. They crept up to the window. The witch was inside. She was chanting, One toad, two toads, three toads, four. I shall keep thee forever more. Milo and Marcus saw Maisie. They recognised a few of the other people too, all in different costumes for Samhain, all lost in different years. Quickly, said Milo. When I go inside, I will distract her and you sneak to the cauldron and tip it. But the creature, cried Marcus. Milo ripped a piece of his shirt off, and then again and again, until he had four small pieces. Get to the cauldron, and whatever you do, do not listen to her. My father told me it is her voice that will put you under her spell. Stuff these into your ears. And they did, so that they could not hear a thing. Milo ran inside the house before Marcus could say another word. He counted to three then ran in after him. Milo was running in circles around the table, the witch trying to catch him. Come to me, little one! Milo kept running in circles. She could not control him, for he could not hear her. Marcus burst inside and ran at the gargoyle. He knocked him off his stool and tipped the cauldron. It was heavier than anything he had ever lifted, but he pushed with all his might and the broth spilled across the floor. The witch screamed. The gargoyle picked Marcus up by his shirt and flew around the room. From up high, Marcus could see a glowing box. It was made of glass and looked as if all the fog in the world was stuffed inside. This must be where the witch's power is held, he thought. He knew what he must do. He slipped out of his shirt, falling back to the floor. The gargoyle screeched. The witch still chased Milo. Marcus grabbed the box. Suddenly the witch stopped. No! She cried. Marcus slammed it to the floor, shattering into a thousand pieces. The box broke and the fog turned into tiny little shining stars. They floated up into the air and out the window. The witch turned to stone and crumbled into dust. Her gargoyle too. She was vanquished. And then the people at the table, Maisie included, began to move. The spell is broken, cried Milo. You have saved us all, said Maisie. And the three little M's embraced. All together, they went back to town and found that the fog had cleared. The three little M's were made heroes of the land. The witch was never heard from again. And the townspeople lived happily ever after. The end. And now it's time to take a deep breath, close our eyes, so that we may drift off into a world of our own adventure. Good night, children. <laughs>